finally got some sunshine today. I know I'm always talking about here in Northern California, we don't have riding season, but we finally got some sunshine. It's been raining for the past four days. Even though I can go out and ride in the rain, sometimes our rain gets extremely cold, so I don't want to go out and ride in no cold rain. So what I'm doing now is basically, what I'm doing now is basically going to take a quickie while I got some of this sunshine. Y'all can see all this sun. So I'll go ride my 27. What we call 27 is basically a back road from our house. It's approximately 27 miles round trip from our house to where we're going. All clear. I'm gone. Ride into the sun. Put the shell down. So what I'm doing, oh, didn't check my tire light. My tire's flashing, so I'm low on the tire. So 27 back home and air up when I get back home. So what I'm going to talk about today while on this ride is basically what to do when you get stopped by the police in order to make the stop quicker and you can be on your way to your destination wherever that destination may be especially if you're out on a trip and trying to get to your next destination or perhaps trying to get back home and quickly so we're going to talk about what to do when all of a sudden you see those red and blues in your mirror and you hear that song in your head talking about bad boys bad boys what you gonna do what you gonna do when they come from you police bar pick them out hey <laughs> it's out here having fun trying to get some of these 27 twisties right quick but the topic i want to talk about is this because you know you never know no matter where you are you never know when you're gonna get pulled over and you wanna get that stop going as quickly as possible so you can be on the world again. Whether you get a citation or not, it may be depend on some of these things that I'm about to talk to you about right now. Anyway, the minute you see the red and blue lights pulling you over, first thing you should do is start your recording device. If you have a GoPro or any recording device, start your recording device for your safety, just in case things don't go as planned. So first thing first, start your recording device. Don't forget that. Okay, second thing. Now that you have the recording device started and you know for sure that those red and blues are pulling you over, you find a spot to pull over immediately because the longer you take to pull over the longer the police think that you're running from them and they constitute a pursuit even later on if you say you are not running you just finding a spot find a spot quickly as possible and pull over oh it's a beautiful day today can't wait till all the fields start getting green okay Okay, now if you're on a freeway, obviously, you might want to find a nearest exit before you start pulling over. Because you don't want to pull over on a freeway. It is extremely dangerous for you and a police officer. I mean, you've seen tons of videos where drunk drivers gravitate towards the red and blue lights just because they're drunk. Okay, now once you decide to pull over and obviously on a freeway you want to take the nearest exit the next thing you should be doing is find a location to pull over where there's people witnesses for your protection trust me you want witnesses and you have your camera as a backup witness and preferably is it at night a location where there's plenty of light why witnesses a lighted camera protect you so, once you pull over, and I'm going to pull over here right now and start talking about some of these other tips right quick. Once you pull over, there's a couple things you really, really need to do. And I heard a lawyer 
and another motorcycle talk about one of the first things you should do is get out your paperwork I'm here to tell you people that's a big no-no you don't want to do that you don't want to put your hands anywhere where the police officer can not see your hands so the best thing to do you know we like to stop our bike turn it off and kind of sit like this the police officer can't see your hands if you got your arm folded they don't know if you're reaching for a weapon it's extremely important just if you was in the car to keep your hands on your handlebars you can put your kicks back down and relax just relax keep them on the handlebars that way when they walk it up they can actually see your hands you start digging around in things they don't know what you're doing and all of a sudden they're reaching for their weapon and you have a weapon a loaded weapon pointing at you with probably a police officer that's extremely nervous because you start fidgeting around and moving too quickly once that occurs the next thing you do just obviously let the officer approach you and as the officer approach this one is very important you need to listen to this do not volunteer any information when the officer come up don't start talking to him about yes officer I know I ran that stop sign or yes officer I know I was speeding you don't need to do all that let them come up to you make contact and let them start asking the questions so by all means do not start volunteering any information let the officer ask the questions then you can answer the question based on the type of the questions they ask him how you're doing and all that stuff. You can, act, you can say fine and everything. You don't have to be rude and start saying, hey, why are you pulling me over? Why are you doing me over? I wasn't doing nothing. You have nothing better to do. Then you're probably just asking for a citation. Whereas maybe at that particular point in time, he was having a good day and was planning on just letting you off with a warning, especially if you know you're guilty. Now, the next thing is if he asking for driver license and insurance and everything, and you, like most people, carry it on you or you carry it in your bike, regardless to what you carry, your driver license or insurance, let the officer know, hey, my license is in my bike, I am reaching for it. Or my license is on me in my left front jacket, I'm reaching for it. But keep that recorder going. Make sure you record everything possible to work in your behalf. And as I stated before, don't volunteer no information. Now, once you get your information and hand it to the police officer, then he start asking questions like, what is your name or where's your address? Yes, you can answer those questions. That's basic clarification questions so they can know that you are who you say you are. But there are many people that use false IDs and get the address wrong on the ID and then say, oh, I forgot to. I forgot to change the address on my driver license. No, it's not gonna work, trust me. So, those questions you can answer. They're just clarifying that you are who you say you are. Now, if they're asking questions like, where are you headed? Then you have a choice not to answer those questions. It has nothing to do with the reason that you stopped me especially if the officer tell you why you stopped. Now you can ask, okay officer, why did you stop me? And if the officer being rude, you don't have to be rude back with the officer. Just let them do their job and that way you can be on your way as quickly as possible. Okay, the next thing is, if the officer do decide to give you a citation for some reason, there's no need to get extremely upset. Yeah, you're going to get upset. But what I'm talking about, no need to start yelling and, and challenging it right there on the spot. If you want to challenge it, you can always take it to court. But remember, if you're from out of town or you're on a long trip somewhere, it's most likely you're going to get a ticket and the officer is going to write you a ticket because they know you're probably not going to return back to go to court to fight the ticket. So that is one you probably have to suck up. However, When you get a citation, you know you have to sign acknowledgement of the citation. It's not an admission of guilt. It's just saying that you're acknowledging that you got the citation for whatever violation that they're writing it up for. Now, this is important. Very, very important. Listen carefully. If you choose not to sign a citation, what you're doing is let 
letting the officer know that, hey, I want to be taken before a magistrate immediately. I'm not signing the citation. I don't believe I'm guilty. I want my day in court now. Bad move for most part. I don't know. Some counties, some states of the country will actually can do that. However, if that occurs, then they're going to take you there, which means it's an arrest. And what happens when you get arrested? They're going to have to tow your bike. And that's where all the problems start occurring. So sign a citation immediately. And you're going through a whole system that you didn't have to go through when you could have been going on with your vacation, bikeation, or whatever you were doing for that trip. Man, it's a beautiful day. Loving this. Woo! Ah, <laughs> look at this. I mean, here in California, our hills aren't green yet. But when they come green, this is one of our favorite back roads. Nice, good sweepers, a couple of twisties, and that's about it. But it's 27 miles from our house. Anyway, back to what I was speaking about. So, sign the citation and be on your way. Now, you can ask questions. Now, you don't need to go stand, hey, officer, you're wrong. You know, I know you're lying. What's your name? What's your badge number? You can get that just by looking at it. And for the most part, 99% of the time, it's on the citation anyway. So you can make a complaint later. But from there, you can be on your way. And don't have to worry about all this craziness with dealing with the police. Now, for the most part, you can ask police officers. Obviously, ask them <laughs> while you're not riding. Why do you stop motorcycles? And most of the time, police officers just don't like stopping motorcycles. So if you get stopped, it's likelihood that you was driving erratically, doing real crazy stuff, really, really speedy, because police officers really don't like to stop motorcycles. And obviously it's easy to get away if you're in heavy traffic from a police officer. But remember, <laughs> they have radios. So, there are just a few things I wanted to run by you because people seem to think that a lot of police officers hate motorcycles. No, they just doing their job. And if you're driving reckless, especially on a motorcycle, you're not only putting your own life in danger, but someone else's life that you can be putting in danger too, just by causing a crash that you could have avoided by driving safe. So the best way to handle the police officer is don't get stopped in the first place. <laughs> That's just a few tips I have for now, so hope they help you out just in case you get stopped. Remember these things. Now, there's a lot of things that you need to do regarding knowing your rights and the law of when and what a police officer can do when they stop you. That's a whole different subject that we may cover later. Anyway, I'm Rich from Boots and Jeans Riders. If you like this, go down and give me a thumbs up. Oh, look at this car going around a double yellow line to get around these bikers. Woo! Always got to be on your P's and Q's, ladies and gentlemen. And subscribe to the channel. And after you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell. That way YouTube will let you know when we put up more videos like this. And we're probably going to be doing this a lot now. And we don't have another vacation coming up until May. Make So make sure you hit that bell when you subscribe so you can follow us on our May vacation coming up where we ride in Route 66 heading out to America and follow us on Instagram so we can get daily updates to where we are. Until then, Rich from Boots and Jeans Riders, ride long, ride hard, ride strong, and most importantly, ride safe. Peace. Mm -hmm.